All right, the headline is the Secure the Border Act will cost Arizona millions to enforce, and that might make it unconstitutional. Back in 2004, voters in Arizona enacted a strict rules for ballot measures that require spending. Now, the GOP-backed immigration enforcement bill doesn't address them. So what this means, that according to the Arizona Constitution and our ballot initiatives and the way we budget money when they have ballot initiatives that require spending— this may make it unconstitutional. I don't know for sure that it won't or that it will. I do know that this is a question. Everyone is talking about the cost of this. I talked to Representative Siskamani Juan Siskamani yesterday about this, and he says he's listening to law enforcement and others that are concerned about the costs. Now, this measure has been met with skepticism and, and even criticism from the business community and even law enforcement. So I'm listening to law enforcement on this and saying, what are the issues that you see? What are the potentially harmful things? We don't want to, you know, try to make something better and make it worse by trying to make it better the way that, that this seems to be going. So the residual effects of this are felt nationwide. I talked earlier about what's happening in Washington state. A suburb of Seattle is furious and they want a state of emergency declared in the state because the city of Seattle, overwhelmed with migrants in their city, are busing them to the suburbs. And the suburbs, who don't have nearly the resources of Seattle, are saying, we're being overwhelmed. We need a state of emergency declared. In New York City, the average hotel room rate in the city right now is $301 a night, which is a record. One in every five hotels in New York City is now a shelter. I want you to think about this. If you've never been to New York City, the enormity of that city is breathtaking. It is is the most amazing place. They joke, but they're not joking when they talk to tourists. You can always tell who the tourists are because you're looking up. You cannot believe the size of the buildings on Manhattan Island, just on Manhattan. 20% One in five hotels in this massive city is now a shelter. Well, so the hotel owners really don't have a reason to not keep up with the program because they're making big money. Your tax dollars are paying for this. It It is about the money we're spending, but more than anything else, it's not set up in a way to be successful for everyone, but some are being, if you're a hotel owner and you're booked 100% seven days a week at the rates the government's willing to pay, and then you're a hotel owner down the street that is not a shelter, but now you're charging an average of 300 bucks a night. Two years in, as the city's peak tourism season is about to begin, the migrant crisis has helped dramatically shift the hotel landscape in New York. The conversion of hotels to shelters has sharply decreased the supply of rooms, just as tourist demand has risen nearly to pandemic levels and is protected to, projected to match a record high. This is from the New York Times, which is certainly not known as a conservative publication. I love New York. I absolutely love to visit that city. It has got a vibe that is just so unique and so cool. I love Midtown Manhattan for some reason. I think it's because I that's the part of town I know the best. But when I'm in Midtown, I just love it. I love the feeling of it during the day. I love it at night. I love to be in Times Square. When you go in the theater district, when you're around, when you walk in, I, I took my brother, my brother and sister-in-law, we were there watching my nephew play high school basketball. So we took a trip into the city one day and I wanted to show them some of the places I knew. And I didn't want to tell them anything. I just wanted them to walk around. And that feeling you get when you don't know where you are, but you're looking at all the cool things around you. And all of a sudden we look up and my sister-in-law says, oh my gosh, that's Radio City Music Hall. And I'm like, you see this all over the city. All of these landmarks you've seen on TV and you've heard about your whole life and you're walking up on them. 300 bucks a night on average for a hotel room. It is a residual effect of what's happening. It is a disaster in this country. So Arizona is making, is contemplating a law that the voters will vote on. And I think there are going to be a lot of Arizona voters that say yes to 2060. You can't blame them, and this is where the opposition makes me crazy. You can't blame the voters for saying yes to this. They're fed up. They're angry. They feel as if they're being ignored by the federal government. They want something done. So instead of calling them racist and instead of saying that all of a sudden the cops in border towns are going to become racist and these are unfunded mandates, these are all major concerns. But you end up talking about the lesser of two evils because you are trying to put a square peg in a round hole.
You have got the local jurisdictions trying to do something that the federal government's supposed to do. But if you don't do something, you're going to be in a bad position as well. If the Texas law goes into effect, and it's already having an effect, because if you look at the huge increase of people that are crossing into San Diego and into Southern California, it's because they're avoiding Texas. Well, if that law goes into effect and Texas law enforcement starts doing what they're going to do, we're going to see an uptick here. So all of those local jurisdictions are going to be you talk. You listen to the sheriff of Cochise County, Daniels, talk about the how much it's costing them in jail space, what what that money is costing him in deputies, food banks and hospitals and ambulances and clinics. And it's only going to get worse unless this federal government acts. But is it going to? Certainly not this year. The Republicans have had great plans in the House. It was over a year ago they passed H.R. 2. Senate never took it up. Then you have Chuck Schumer come out and say, we're going to do something, and if the Republicans don't do what we want, they don't care. So that's what they said, and they went away, and nothing happened. We all should be upset. We all should be furious. It's one of the reasons why President Biden is not liked on either side of the aisle. It's issues like this. We're going to shift back to local issues. Is it possible that the Arizona state legislature and the Republicans could lose their majority in both the House and the Senate? Thanks for watching the Mike Broomhead Show. Tap to watch and listen to the new season of Amazing Arizonans, a KTAR News podcast. You can also click the button in the middle to subscribe.